Greetings everyone, Fru here. Welcome to the Demo Hub. Welcome to the channel. In today's demo, we're going to go in and look at working with stored procedures within Snowpack for Python. Now, if you're not familiar with Snowpack for Python, we've done a lot of demos on the channel. So check for those around. Now, let's dive right in into working with stored procedures. We're going to look at some options, some nuances, some configurations. And overall, we hope to be an extension to the documentation. You can either read the documentation or you can follow through the video to see how to elevate and take advantage of uh, the stored procedures within Snowpack uh, for Python. But that said, we're gonna assume you have Snowpack for Python set up. We're also gonna assume you have a session ready to go. A session is what allows us to uh, interact with the Snowpack for Python environment. Now, once we have a session, uh, there are a couple of things we can do. Now, let's go in and create a function. Uh, here, we're going to create a simple Python function. This function would take a session as a parameter. Now, what is this session? Uh, let's zoom in here for a second. This session is the Snowpack session we've created above. Again, we do have demos on how to set up your Snowpack for Python session. If you haven't done that, check on the channel for those videos. Once we have a session, we're going to go in and do a simple print of the version for Pandas and the version for XGBoost. Nothing fancy. Now, if I run this code, this code will run locally on my machine. But to make this a Snowpack for Python start procedure, we're going to add a decorator here called SPProc. Now, this decorator would tell us that this function is not just an ordinary Python function, but this is a snowpack for Python uh, stored procedure. So this will be treated as a stored procedure. And if I were to execute this, this stored procedure would execute. And on the Snowflake side, it would create a stored procedure, albeit it will be a temporary stored procedure, but it will still be a stored procedure nonetheless. So go back over to my query history, do a refresh, you will see a stored procedure created here. So that implementation is here. This is a temporary stored procedure. All right, now let's go back into the code. One way we can do our stored procedures is what we've seen. Our alternative is we define the stored procedure with uh, Lambda expressions. If you have a Lambda expression or Lambda code, functional programming, do Lambda session, taking that value and do some transformations with the Lambda expression return some results, but here we're wrapping this Lambda expression around SPProc. Previously, we had the decorator to define that procedure as a Snowpack for Python start procedure. Here we're doing the same and we're just wrapping that expression around this anonymous function. This is uh, going to be exactly the same. Now we're giving this a name called add one. So we're basically taking a value and we're adding one to it and we're going to return the result. If I were to run this, it would behave very similar to what we had before. So there are really several options for defining stored procedures within Snowpack for Python. Now let's uh, take a look at some other options. We know in Python, it's very common to do something like this. Again, a trivia function, but uh, just to hit home the point on a couple of concepts here. So let's define this function minus. And essentially what we're taking here is session and some value X. We're going to do a minus of that and return the result. So nothing fancy, nothing to write home about. But again, as before, if we want to make this a stored procedure, there's something that we need to make this a stored procedure within Snowpack for Python. So we can add that decorator here and this will make this a stored procedure. But if you want to make this stored procedure persist uh, long term, Let's go ahead and give this a name called minus one. So start procedure. What is the name of it? Minus one. Is it permanent? Yes, that's permanent. Because it's permanent, we're going to need a stage where to persist that start procedure as a permanent start procedure. If we were doing just a throwaway temporary start procedures like before, we didn't specify a stage for that. But if you're going to make this permanent so anyone else can come in and see the start procedure, you need a stage. Now, assuming I don't have that stage existing already, we can simply go ahead and create a new stage, 
create a replace stage through stage, we use that stage here. Now, if this thought procedures exists, and we want to replace that, you're going to put in this parameter to replace it. If there are any packages or dependencies, you're going to specify those dependencies here. So very uh, straightforward. Now, how can we invoke this thought procedure? And this is where we want to call out a couple of things here on how to invoke this thought procedure. And you're going to see some differences on how this works. Let's try the very first option. So first option is, well, we have a name here for this function called minus one. We can simply go around that uh, function and do minus one and give it a value. So if I give it five, we should minus one from five. All right, you might say, but through this is interesting. We'll call it minus one. Which minus are we referring to? Are we referring to the minus of the function or the minus of the name of the stored procedure? So to make that not confusing, and I think we didn't even call this minus, we called it a spell wrong, but let's just make it very obvious that we're talking about two different things here. So up here we have the name of the stored procedure, which is being registered to Snowflake, being called M1, but the actual implementation in Python is called minus one. So if we come here and we say within this code, we do minus one, five, what do we expect? So let's actually print this on the screen. If I were to, let's run this without printing on the screen first, just to see uh, what happens. So if we run this without printing on the screen, what we're going to notice is it will run call minus one, give it uh, five. So you should minus that and we should expect four, but nothing is printed to the screen. Why? Because this is just a return statement, but we're not printing anything. Now let's go over to see what's happening on the Snowflake site. So if we go back to the Snowflake site on the query history, and we were to refresh our query history here, what we see is we've created the start procedure here, but what is the name of that start procedure? The name of the start procedure is M1. So going back, and this is important because there is nothing in here that says minus one. Okay. So nothing in here says minus one within our query history. So where then is this minus one happening? This minus one is happening just locally. So if I were to go ahead and print uh, this minus one and execute this code, it should print the result, but be rest assured, this result is just happening here locally. We're not taking advantage of the function we registered. So let's uh, run this, see what it prints. So it does print four for us, right? It prints the four because this is running locally. Again, if you go back to query history, there is no stop procedure here called minus one. So nothing is coming on the Snowflake site called minus one. Now let's go back and see how we can remedy this situation. So we know that we've passed a session to use for calling the stored procedure. So if I go in, we were to use a session. So instead of just printing locally, let's actually use the session and do a call. What are we trying to call? We want to call a name of stored procedure. Well, what name are we going to give? We're going to give the name M1. Right, because this is a start procedure we've registered to this session. And what is this? What is the session? The session is uh, a connection to Snowflake running on the Snowflake side of the wall. So here, if we do M1, so re referencing this, I was coming here. Well, what is the parameter that this ex this expects? It expects an integer. It expects a number x. So let's give this x as ten. Okay. So now we're going to actually call on the server side, the start procedure that was registered on like this, which is just printing this function here locally. So if I run this, it takes a few seconds. As expected, it printed the four, which is what we expect from above. It didn't print anything here. Well, that's not the problem. Even though nothing was printed, if we go back over to the server side and we do a refresh, guess what? We now see. Uh, that function being called on the Snowflake site. So here, function was registered. And here we have that function being called with the five, uh, actually with 10, we're getting a result. So call M1, 10, we're getting that result. So this is exactly uh, what 
we want. So that is exactly what we want. All right. Now, if we can go uh, even further, another way of calling this would be a session instead of doing just the call where we give the name of the, of the function we registered, the start procedure we registered, uh, we can do session.sql, which is another option. And within that, now we can just simply put in the SQL text. Well, how do we call start procedures in Snowflake? We have the call uh, function. So we can just do call M1 directly. And in this case, we're just going to write the entire SQL there. Right, so let's do 100. I'm just going to go ahead and do a collect here just to, so we can see uh, that result executed from the lazy evaluation. So let's run this. So very similar to what we had here. This is one way of calling the stored procedure. And this is an, an alternate way of calling the stored procedure. Again, we're not calling the Python function. We are calling the stored procedure we registered on the Snowflake site. So let's go back over and verify what we just did. Refresh this. And now we have uh, calling this with 100 and the results do come back. Now let's go in to that database where uh, we're doing all this work and do a check of procedures. We have one procedure here called M1, and this is the only procedure we registered. So whatever name we give to the procedure is what we should be calling when we do the calls below here. So if I were to call this math1, this thought procedure would be registered as math1, okay? And if I were to go ahead and, and do M1, M1, this would be a problem because M1 doesn't exist. So we cannot do this. All right. If I were to even go back and keep this as M1, 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 and I came in and do something like, and I use the name of the, the Python function, and I did this, again, this is a problem because this function doesn't exist on the server side. What the server sees is this name. So if I were to run this, this should be fine. It will print the result, but it will complain that this doesn't exist, right? Because it needs this name and not this name. So let's go ahead and try this. As we expect, this number should have been printed. If we go over uh, here and look at the logs, it did print the four as expected. So this is successful. But by the time it comes in here, it's not going to see anything on the server side called minus one. And that's where it throws that error complaining about unknown function. This doesn't exist. So just a quick overview of Snowpack for Python stored procedures. Uh, there are many options for taking advantage of this. Stored procedures are very capable in the SQL world. A lot of uh, work you do, if you want to re reuse that work over and over, it makes sense to put it into a stored procedure, either a stored procedure or a function. A function will work row at a time and return typically scalar values, but stored procedure could have a lot more logic in it. So it makes sense in certain cases to put and do work in stored procedure. And hopefully this demo has shown us how to create those stored procedures either as anonymous stored procedures or register them with specific names so you can come back and reuse them. If you're going to persist those stored procedures, you need a stage for that stored procedure to be persisted. You can override the stored procedure, bring in packages and other dependencies into your stored procedure from Anaconda. And once you have that, you can invoke the stored procedure in different ways. If you just want to call your function here locally, fine and good, you certainly can do that. But if you want to reach out to the session on the Snowflake side and call the stored procedure, you can either do that using SQL, like we've seen here, or you can do the call method and give this your name. Now, on the server side, on the Snowflake side, the users that are taking advantage of the stored procedures, they never even have to go into the Python side. They can literally come in here and call this like any other stored procedure uh, you have on your uh, environment. So, so there you have it. This has been through with Demo Hub. We've looked at creating stored procedures within Snowpack for Python. As always, you can read the documentation, very detailed. Uh, hopefully, this demo has been an extension to that documentation for you. If you like the video, do like it, share it with somebody that might get value out of it. And as always, we'll see you in our next demo.